At this time, I'd like to call class 011717. At this time, I'd like to ask you to stand as the Nash County Firefighters Association Honor Guard and the Rocky Mount Fire Department Honor Guard present our colors. Please remain standing following that for invocation. If you remain standing for the invocation, I'm Keith Smith. Good evening to you. I'm Associate Vice President for Community and Governmental Affairs. Let us pray. We're thankful for all that has been bestowed upon us, and we ask the power that created this day to be invoked on this ceremony, recognizing the Recruit Firefighters Training Academy 011717, and let it come to fruition that they serve so others may live. Please let this ceremony be befitting of those individuals who have worked hard to make this happen. The families and friends who provided support, the instructors who provided direction, the administration and the board of trustees that made certain that the mission of Nash Community College was adhered to. Let this be one more positive event in the history of Nash Community College. 
I submit this invocation to the one who sustains us all. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Dr. Smith, for those kind words. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Bill Carver, president of Nash Community College. It gives me a great deal of pleasure to welcome you to our campus. I can't help but uh, it's been a, a, a season of ceremony, as Dr. Smith alluded to, one more event that we are mighty proud of. I, I've always said that Nash Community College, when I don't know if some of you may have heard me on the campaign trail when we were trying to pass the bond for the new building, and now that's here. And, but as I, I said, during those uh, speeches that I had to make at some of the firehouses, quite frankly, and that Nash Community College trains individuals that run towards disasters when other people are running away. That is our first responder community, and I see some of you in the room today in uniform. Thank you for your service. I also refer to you as our local heroes. Graduates, you are joining those ranks, and you should be proud. I think I saw you in the gym a few times. I, yeah, I was that old guy that had the T-shirt on. You might, now I got the tie on, you may recognize me. Um, and you were getting ready to do some of those uh, exercises and routines that you were doing there. And I think the group was a little larger when I first encountered you in the gym. You're to be congratulated for the perseverance that you have shown and the wherewithal to, to make it all happen and the support community that you have behind you and the hours of instruction and the time that you had to put in because quite frankly, when I was going around to some of those firehouses and making the campaign speeches for the bond, I would ask the people in attendance, do you want more training, chief? Do you want more training or less training? And, that, and every single time it was more training. And we see that day in and day out today that when we need more training because we don't know what the events are that you're gonna see in your career. But we know that more training equals that you will be in better, a better level of service to respond to those times when you're called upon for service. I hope, it is my hope that you always Remain safe out there. Return to us when you do need some additional training. And we'll see the same investment that we've made and we continue to make when they have, I uh, was understanding the other day that we need to continue to make some other investments. And you make us proud because you are the result of our investment. So ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the graduates, the students, faculty and staff, and the Board of Trustees, welcome to Nash Community College. Mr. Scott Rogers began his fire service career in 1987 with the Stony Creek Fire Rescue Department in Nash County. He began working full-time with Nash County Emergency Services in January 1991 as a fire protection inspector. Scott was promoted to Deputy Fire Marshal in 1994 and Division Chief in 1996, where he served until 2014 and was appointed to his current position as Deputy Chief. Scott also serves as the first Vice President of the Eastern Carolina Firefighters Association and is the Eastern Director on the North Carolina Firefighters Association Executive Board. Rogers holds an associate's degree in fire protection technology from Wilson Community College, a bachelor's degree in occupational safety from Columbia Southern University, and a master's of public administration from Bellevue University. He has also been designated by the Center for Public Safety Excellence as a Chief Fire Officer and Fire Marshal. Scott lives in the Red Oak community of Nash County with his wife Amy, daughter Jessica, and his son John. It's my pleasure this evening to welcome our guest speaker, Mr. Scott Rogers. Thank you. That may be my second best introduction ever. <laughs> I was doing this a couple of weeks ago and the guy that was supposed to do it didn't show up, so I did it myself. <laughs> right, not at Guys, it's great to see you smiling. I see you once in a while during class and you're not always smiling, right? <laughs> so this is my favorite thing about graduations is to see you smile finally and I'm glad because it doesn't get any better than this, okay? 
Uh, so uh, with that, good evening, uh, distinguished guests, our cadets, our family and friends, Dr. Carver. It's, it's certainly great to be here, a, a pleasure to be with you. Uh, this is certainly an important night. Uh, these cadets in front of us have accomplished a great deal, both individually and collectively, and I certainly believe that uh, warrants a celebration. Never once did I expect uh, my fire service career to take me from being a young firefighter uh, impressionable cadet just as in, a, in a, an academy very similar to this some 30 years ago to a point where I would be speaking to you tonight. Yes, 30 years. I, I know it doesn't look like it, but I've taken very good care of myself. <laughs> no, I, I really have. It's been a long and winding road for me to get to the point in my career and there are many reasons how and why I have been able to achieve the goals I have set for myself over the years. However, tonight is not about my story. It is about the large steps that you cadets are going to take after you receive your graduation certificates. It may very well be one of the largest steps and most influential steps you take in your life. As you are handed that piece of paper tonight, you will be entering, entering the greatest and most satisfying, but yet the most hazardous oc occupation in this country. Volunteer, career, male, female, it will not matter. You will all be referred to as brothers. And you will be expected to act and carry yourself as your brother's keeper. In order to accomplish this enorm enormous task, there are several personality traits that you must develop and practice throughout your career. Here's where I'm going to stray from the standard graduation speech so often given at ceremonies like this. I'm not going to tell you how to operate safely, how to stretch a line, how to ventilate a structure, attack a fire, or even wear your turnout gear appropriately. You've already been taught that, and you've mastered those skills. However, what I am going to do is introduce you and explain to you and ask you to adopt several individual unique characteristics you will need to acquire or sharpen in order to become a true member of the brotherhood I speak of. Whether it be crawling down a dark hall in a smoky, smoky hallway at three in the morning with your partner, or simply consoling a fellow firefighter on the loss of a loved one, you will need to practice and remain faithful to these qualities when you leave this building tonight. I can guarantee that it will not be as easy as you might think to fulfill those standards. Some of you will have a harder time than others, and many will be offered numerous reasons to stray from the ideals by firefighters who will never live up to the standards you have. Remember what I have to say here tonight, and becoming a devoted practitioner and staunch supporter of the following core values will lead you to a long, productive, and self-fulfilling career. A career that I, have often, that I have referred to tonight as a brotherhood. For you see, to me, the fire service is a band of brothers and sisters with a common goal, and that goal is serving our fellow man. I also believe that failing, serving your fellow man is a calling that is ordained by God. So I ask you not to take it lightly. The first standard you should set, yourself, set for yourself is a high level of professionalism to which you will aspire. The word professionalism is not new to the fire service. You've heard that before. It is across both volunteer and career ranks. Being a true professional comes from within the individual person. It is not the job of the fire academy staff to teach you how to be a professional. What they did is give you the basic knowledge you will need to become a professional. In my fire service experience, I've been blessed to work with and mentor and be mentored by several excellent fire service professionals, both locally and across this state and nation some of which are in this room tonight, and I'm grateful. Their tutoring and passage of information has allowed me to develop several simple yet basic ideals that have greatly assisted me in reaching my current position. These values are always treat all people the way in which you would like to be treated, always conduct yourself in a calm, intelligent manner, always display a composed demeanor during emergency situations, and always perform to your highest level of competence. 
Adhering to these and other common sense traits that you will learn during your fire service career and within your lifetime will give you the foundation from which you will build a high level of individual professionalism and respect from your peers. Secondly, you must become and remain passionate about the fire service. The dictionary's definition of passion defines the word as having great enthusiasm, powerful feelings, desire, and lust. All these words can describe the way you should feel about and how you should embrace your newfound obsession for the fire service. This will not always be an easy task. In your journey, you will come across some of your so-called brothers who will make every attempt to take away this feeling. But do not let them infiltrate your world and corrupt the road you will travel. Stay true to your passion and you will reap many rewards throughout your career. In my life, the fire service comes only behind faith and my family. And I have, to, I have come to discover without passion, you will fail at all three. So remember, negativity is the enemy of passion. A third necessary trait is dedication. Once you have developed the passion necessary to become an important part of your fire department, you need to dedicate yourself to a particular course of action. Early in my volunteer career, I dedicated myself to becoming a well-trained, highly skilled firefighter who other members could rely on in the heat of battle. I attended every training opportunity available and became a true student of the craft. At the time, I had no ambition of becoming a career firefighter. However, shortly, Gaining a, after gaining a career position and realizing that I had found my true passion, I dedicated myself to a course of action that would lead me to where I am today. Though there have been many naysayers, I stuck to my plan. I have continued to train, continued to study and practice, and guess what? I have supported my family so far and still have a job that I absolutely love. And I think that'll happen for you too. I found those that did it right and I followed them and I encourage you to do the same because soon others will be following you. Be consistent, always keep dedicated to the job, your fellow firefighters and the goals you set for yourself. This attitude will allow you to achieve objectives you never felt you could accomplish and great opportunities that will follow you throughout your life. The last character trait I would like to discuss is pride. Having respect for your own dignity and worth, achievements that you have garnered, or feeling satisfied about a quick knockdown at a house fire are all definitions of this attribute. It is important that you develop and maintain pride in yourself, your company, and your department, and the manner in which you carry yourself. You and you alone will set the tone for your future. Having pride in your work and your daily activities will improve your attitude and work ethic in the firehouse and in your personal life. I remember how proud I was when I graduated from the academy. Nobody could take that happiness I felt. I was ready, willing, and able to take any challenge that come my way. You should always also feel that way tonight. Be proud of your accomplishments to this point and set a path for the rest of your career. Be professional in your job, passionate about your career, dedicated to learning, and prideful in your accomplishments. Remember whatever goal you seek to achieve are there for the taking. Start reaching for them when you leave this ceremony tonight. So tonight, celebrate your accomplishments. Look to your family and friends seated behind you tonight for support. Prioritize your faith, your family, and the fire service, and go do great things for each. Before I finish, I would like to add some very meaningful words that you will probably that you probably have, are not hearing for the first time tonight. I did not invent them, but I do stand by them. They were given to me by firefighters who, on a daily basis, practice the same principles I speak of tonight. True professionals to the job and to the brotherhood. These few short words should give you a better perspective of the brotherhood that I speak of and should always remain close to your heart, especially after you and your fellow firefighters have just moved down that hot, smoky hallway and back. After the job, 
Stop for a second and look into the face of your exhausted and soot-stained brothers. Acknowledge their existence. Be grateful for their skills and camaraderie. And always remember, everybody goes home. My prayer for each of you is safety and satisfaction. May you each work to make the fire service that I love better than you found it. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you, Scott. All right. We're getting to the nitty gritty now. We got some inspiring words, and it's almost time to uh, get those badges that you work so hard for. But first, um, I do want to make some, some special acknowledgments. Uh, I want to begin by thanking all the NCC administrators, faculty, and staff for their ongoing support in administering this program. There's a lot of moving parts in 18 weeks of fire training. Um, so I appreciate all that. And on behalf of Nash Community College and those about to graduate today, I want to express our deepest appreciation for all the fire and, the fire and rescue organizations and individuals that have helped us. Um, we couldn't do it without their, without their support, their people, their equipment. This Firefighter Academy is one of the most rigorous and intensive training programs in the fire service. Uh, these students have learned the importance of instant obedience to orders, safety in an inherently unsafe career, importance of a firefighter code of conduct, as well as the role stress plays in decision making and safe performance of firefighter duties. This career, although very rewarding, is among the most physically and mentally demanding Scott touched on that just a little bit when he was talking. This program is rigorous for that reason, to try and best prepare them for that. So after going through 18 weeks of such a rigorous program, this badge pin and ceremony is often a highlight in a firefighter's career. I remember mine very well. Just as you are, I'm very proud of everything they've gone through, all the hard work and determination they've put, in, put into this program and to reaching their goals. So at this time, I'd like to call Mr. Andrew James Dorn. I'm gonna give you a little bit of uh, information about Mr. Dorn. He's a very emotionally charged individual. A little bit stubborn at times. Uh, <laughs> But the strangest thing is of all the difficult things that we do in this academy, and probably it's something to do with the fact that he's from New Jersey, the hardest thing for him to do was say yes sir and yes ma'am. But I think uh, after headbutting a few times, I think we got past that and I think both of us are probably better for it. Um, he's gonna be pinned by his fire chief, uh, the fire chief of Enfield Fire Department, Mr. Ronnie Locke. And just so you know, being a little bit hard-headed and stubborn is not necessarily a bad thing. It's kind of a necessity in this field. <laughs> I'd now like to call Mr. Caesar Espinoza. Mr. Espinoza is a member of the Whitaker's Volunteer Fire Department. Um, and over the course of this training, I, I'd met Mr. Espinoza before in, in, in county training. 
But over the course of this, I, I learned a few other things. Uh, number one is he loves colorful children's mandates. <laughs> and number two is his spirit animal is a grumpy cat. And I didn't know what that was. You'll have to Google it to see what it is, but uh, it fits him. If you look at it, you'll understand why. Um, and finally, what I know is that he has an attitude that can keep your spirits up in the worst of situations. And he did that throughout this program. And I think that's going to benefit him greatly in his career. Uh, he's going to be pinned by his father, Mr. Caesar Espinoza. And now I'd like to call Mr. Justin Scott Lee. He's a member of the Momire Fire Department. And Mr. Lee is probably one of the most intelligent individuals we've ever had come through this program. And he has a great attitude. Uh, however, he is young. And just as with many of us at his age, it's easy to be distracted by hunting and fishing and girls and hanging out with your friends. <laughs> Fortunately for him, he recovers quickly uh, once you get his attention back. And fortunately for me, Having grown up in Momire myself, uh, I knew his mom and daddy and everybody else in Momire, so it wasn't hard to get his attention back. He's going to be pinned by his father and assistant chief of Momire Fire Department, Mr. Kevin Lee. I'd now like to call Mr. James Thomas Lynn. Um, I tried to come up with some funny stories or, or funny moments from training about Mr. Lynn, but I couldn't because he doesn't say anything or make any noise. <laughs> uh, but what I can tell you is that he is one of the most disciplined, respectful, intelligent, responsible young men that I have ever had the pleasure of meeting in my whole life. Um, the sky's the limit for this young man. My biggest hope is, and we've talked about this on several occasions, is that he figures out how to share that with other people and make them rise to his level. Um, he's going to be pinned by the fire chief of Spring Hope Fire Department, Mr. Travis Green. I 
I'd now like to call Mr. Erwin J. Tertius. He's a member of Stony Creek Fire and Rescue Department. And unlike Mr. Lynn, I have a ton of stories about Mr. Tertius. <laughs> but we don't have nearly enough time to go through those. What I will tell you is that he entered this program uh, shy, quiet, not very much self-esteem, not a lot of self, not a lot of confidence. Uh, but he did know for a fact that he wanted to serve people. That's the one thing he told me, and, and he was clear about that the whole time. Um, as time went along, he opened up and grew into an integral part of this team. This is partially due to Project Selfie Esteem, uh, which is a project we started where we were trying to uh, keep tabs on his progress with opening up to people because he would never smile in the morning. So every morning he had to come in and do a selfie. So. Um, I don't know if he's got copies of them all, but I'm relatively certain that any of the rest of the people in his class would be glad to share all those pictures with you if you want to see them. He's going to be pinned by his mother, uh, Araceli Argueta. Unfortunately, uh, Fire and Rescue Coordinator Willie Kearney was unable to be here tonight. He's actually in Wilson doing his instructor qualification so um, he can get more involved in teaching. Uh, and that ran longer. They were a little short on people, so he's actually had to stay a little bit longer. Uh, so I'm going to be doing the special awards tonight. And I'd like to start with the academic award. Each recruit firefighter's written test scores are averaged cumulatively during a recruit training program. There were 50, uh, I believe 56 tests that they took. This average is used to determine a recruit firefighter who attains the highest academic average. The recruit firefighter that receives this award tonight is Mr. James Thomas Lynn. Our second award is known as the Flame Award, and it's awarded to the recruit firefighter who is the most outstanding based upon overall accomplishments. When casting their vote for this honor, the recruit class considers the level of teamwork, fellowship, enthusiasm, and cooperation demonstrated by the members of that class. This is an award determined by majority vote from all the recruit firefighters, and it gives me great pleasure to present this award to Mr. Caesar Espinoza. Hold on. The Flame Award doesn't come with a plaque, but it does come with something special to try and remember this plaque. <laughs> Our final special award is the Instructional Excellence Award. And this is voted on by the class and awarded to the instructor who the class feels was the most influential throughout their training. 
To be considered for this award, the instructor must be approachable and easy to talk to, serve as a mentor and a motivator throughout the class, display a strong dedication to training, and greatly expand on the material found in the textbook and supplemental materials. The winner of this award is Fire Captain Michael Strange. Class 011717, fall in. Retire your guide on. Class, you're dismissed from training. Fall out. <laughs> <laughs> 